Hello everyone and welcome to the YouTube channel of Being ACCA. This is Tushita Gupta, ACCA affiliate and uh, in this video I'm going to teach you how you can save your time in your FM exam using the simple uh, Excel functionalities which are provided and you know uh, these are, uh, you should always be making use of whatever uh, are the possible you know features that we get to use because of the fact that we have computer based exams and these exams have a spreadsheet functionality. So uh, let's get started so uh, there are primarily two formulas uh, which uh, you have to know if you have to work out let's suppose NPV or let's suppose IRR uh, which is a common requirement that gets asked in your ACCA exams ACCA FM exams so these are two formulas which are readily available you do not have to put in manual calculations the spreadsheet can do this for you so uh, just to illustrate how this is used, I'm going to take a hypothetical scenario. So let's suppose these are my years. So let's suppose it's a five year project. The initial investment is let's suppose a thousand um, or maybe let's suppose $10 million. This is 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, you know, whatever the figures. I'm just uh, giving you an example to illustrate how you can use the formula. So if these are my cash flows and this is, uh, you know, uh, this is the thing for which I require to calculate the NPV for. So let's suppose my discount rate that is given to me in the question, my cost of capital, uh, let's assume is 10%. So at the rate of 10%, if I have to calculate the NPV, I do not have to put in manually the discount factors for from the formula sheet that is provided, I can simply uh, use the NPV formula available in the spreadsheet functionality. So this will be used by, you know, writing equals NPV using brackets. First thing that you're going to put over here is the discount rate. There are two options. Either you can select a cell or input the, uh, you know, the discount rate manually. So I can either take 10% this way or take 10% from here. And then I have to select the values on which I want to apply, uh, you know, this as the discount rate. So please always remember that this formula by default discounts the value, the first value that you give for according to one year. So the, the cash flows which are for year zero, that means it is today. So today is already in present value. That's why I do not have to discount that. So I start taking numbers from where I want to start it to discount. So this is how I will close the brackets and hit enter. And this is going to give me the NPV. But uh, over here we have uh, missed one thing we did not add the initial outflow now this is already a negative uh, figure so that's why I'm not using a negative sign I'm just adding it and with this this is actually the NPV that I will get if I even if I manually do all of the calculations over here this is what uh, the answer is going to be I can also demonstrate uh, using the uh, the discount factors which are available. So this is the present value table, 10% and these are the numbers. Um, I think it's not going to let me uh, stay. Okay, so this is 0 0.909, 0 0.826, 0 0.751, 0 0.6, 621. So these are the discount factors. If I use the annuity table and if I just uh, multiply the discount factors with the uh, the cash flows. So this is what I'm going to get. I'm copy pasting this formula to the rest of the table. So it's going to be the sum of this and this. So here also I'm more or less getting the same NPV. The reason for the slight difference why this is 0 0.88 and this is 0 0.89 is because uh, over here we are only using it to three decimal places. The discount tables are only you know till three decimal places but over here the formula is uh, taking more decimal places to get you a more accurate answer. Now this is how you can use the NPV formula Another application of the NPV formula before I move to that, let's also see how we can work out the IRR in such a scenario. So if these are my cash flows, uh, year 0 to 5, I simply can press uh, I equals to IRR, open my brackets. Now over here, 
I have to select all of the cash flows right from year zero till year five. Now, if I uh, close the brackets and hit enter, it's going to give me the IRR. I also have to convert this into percentage because IRR is always uh, given as a percentage. So using this uh, tool over here you can select and with this you will get your answer to two decimal places with this option you will get it to one decimal place usually you should leave it to two decimal places so this is how you can save your time in your exam rather than you know for IRR you are calculating two different NPVs one at a positive figure and one at a negative one so it makes your job easier you simply can apply the IRR formula it's very easy to use and saves your time in the exam and also helps you get a more accurate answer now another thing you know another way where you can use the npv and irr formula to save your time in your exam is if you want to find out the cost of redeemable debt so if we talk about the cost of redeemable debt so um you know if we look at the formula that we use for the cost of redeemable debt what we do is that we find out uh you know the IRR basically of the cash flows that we have out of this project what's the present value uh, so that would be year zero and what are the values that we are going to have in the uh, the cash flows that we are going to have in the rest of the time so perhaps in year zero the current market value of the redeemable debt is let's suppose 107 and year one two three four five uh, so let's suppose uh, these are a uh, nominal value of 100 and these are uh, maybe 5% bonds. So uh, 5 becomes the interest, the rate, interest rate. And we also have to take into account the tax element because uh, businesses do get uh, the benefit of tax uh, deductions when it comes to this. Let's assume this is 30%. So 5 is the cash flow that five is the amount of interest that people are going to get and I multiply that by 70% or you can say one minus 30% to arrive at the after tax figure. So I can copy paste this to the remaining years and in the last year, it's going to be the redemption plus this. So this plus 100, let's suppose it's at the nominal value. So 103.5. So if I have to work out the cost of uh, redeemable debt over here, I can simply use the IRR function equals to IRR, selecting all of the cash flows. And this is going to give me the internal rate of return for this specific uh, debt, the irredeemable debt. Uh, then another way where, so over here we used the IRR function. Another way where, you know, these functions NPV and IRR can be useful for you is perhaps if you have to find out the values of a bond. So maybe uh, value of bond so when it comes to a uh, redeemable debt you will uh, uh, the market price basically of the bond will be nothing but the present value of all the cash flows that you get from this bond so uh, if presently uh, you know let's suppose uh, i'm getting so i have a bond for let's suppose three four five years so uh, in these years let's suppose presently in year one uh, I'm going to get, uh, let's suppose, $6 of interest, 6 6 6 and let's suppose in the last year, it's going to be uh, interest plus the redemption and the uh, nominal value, and uh, that's 100, so 106. So over here, if I have to find out what's going to be the market value, so the market value will basically be the discounted, the present values of all of these future cash flows. So if I have to work out that, uh, I can simply say that bond value will be equals to NPV. Let's suppose my, uh, you know, the yield rate, which the bonds are giving is, let's suppose 8%. So 8% is the rate of yield. And uh, these are my cash flows. So it's going to discount them for 8% uh, using the factors of 8%. And these are the cash flows. So with this, I will get a value le uh, lesser than 100. This signifies that, you know, the, since the interest rate is less than the yield, that is why we get a, a value over here, which is lesser than 100. 
um so this is how you can make use of uh, these functionalities which are available in your spreadsheets these will help you to save your precious time in exam conditions um another thing so if we have a look at the formula sheet uh, there is also the uh, you know the beta formula uh, the acid beta and the equity beta so uh, these calculations also can even be simplified with uh, using uh, you know formulas so that you do not uh, you minimize your chances of making mistakes so perhaps i have my uh, let's suppose equity so uh, let's suppose the market value of my equity is uh, um, 800 then if i talk about my debt then the debt the market value of the debt that I have is let's suppose 200 so and the tax rate also is something that we are going to need because it adjusts for the tax uh, let's suppose it at 30 percent and maybe you are given the equity beta equity beta and you have that as let's suppose uh, 1.6 so this is the equity beta and you have to uh, reach to the asset beta. So the formula over here uh, requires you to take the value of equity uh, in the numerator and divide that by the value of uh, equity plus the value of debt uh, into one minus tax rate. So to simplify these calculations, I can simply say that my value of equity is nothing but 800. Then if I talk about the value of my debt, and I can say that I'll calculate it into one minus tax rate because that is how I need to use it in the formula. So this will be nothing but this multiplied by one minus this. So with this, I am able to work out that how much is the value of my debt after adjusting for tax. So uh, with this, I have my value of debt also. Now with, uh, over here, if I add both of these values, I will be able to work out my denominator. So if I see how much my denominator is going to be VD into 1 minus the tax rate. So if I add both of these figures, I have simply arrived at my denominator. So if you know these are the workings which I do separately, there are lesser chances that I make because probably using so many brackets can lead to a wrong answer. So if you want to avoid or minimize those chances you can use this over here if i find out my asset beta i can i have you know made it pretty simple so over here i can simply say value of equity in the numerator divide that by the total and simply multiply this with the equity beta i think even if you do not use any brackets over here you should still be able to arrive at the right answer if i am not wrong yeah, it's going to help you to make the calculations without the use of any brackets. So this is how using the functionalities which you have in the spreadsheet that gets provided to you in the exam for as the constructed response space, you can make use of it and save your time, become smarter when you solve the exam. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.